Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Ibrahim Qureshi here. I'm quite excited to show you um, today's session which is really on demand, requested by quite a few guys on online but um, um, I am going to show some comments which uh, has been coming through for requesting this particular uh, video on how to create storage using free NAS and provision it to the ESX host. So let's get started. Um, so some comments and feedbacks uh, from Jareen Jones, how to create storage using free NAS. Please make a video on it. And again, another one, Ashutosh Verma. And I have got some other PMs from other guys. So this is it guys. So let's get started. Agenda for today will go through the free NAS configuration, walk through the setup, how I have it in my lab. Um, I'll go through some configuration and then after that we'll jump into the ESX configuration, prepare the ESX host for the network uh, site for getting the iSCSI network ready. Uh, we need to prepare it for that and then once that is done, we then create the iSCSI software initiators. Um, there are two types of initiators. Uh, you can have software initiator for FCOE as well, uh, fiber channel over internet and also uh, iSCSI as well. Um, there are two types of initiator in a sense, there is software initiators and there is hardware initiators as well. Um, in the likes of you know HBAs and um, uh, you can have uh, the um, iSCSI traffic offloaded to the hardware initiators uh, which can do the intelligence and it takes the load of the CPU. Um, so that, uh, that's something which you need to remember that you can use the software initiators but then you are adding extra load on the VM kernel. If you have hardware initiators that, that jo a job is given to the hardware initiator for offloading the IP packets really, iSCSI packets sorry, um, the IP headers when, when, when they reach it. Okay, then we'll go, uh, I'm going to show you how to mount the storage because if the storage is already mounted, you just need to rescan it to see it. Um, but if you're provisioning a new LAN, then you need to obviously uh, name it, format it with VMFS 6 and then add it to the data store. Okay, let's get in detail a little bit. So what do we need to do on FreeNAS site? So FreeNAS obviously is uh, built on FreeBSD. It's a Linux version, a flavor, sorry. It's a Linux flavor um, with FreeNAS is built under. Um, this particular version is 11.2, I think, which I'm running. And the bare minimum requirement for you be able to, you know, even start this setup is you need to have 8 gig memory um, assigned to it. Um, obviously, you will assign it one disk for installing the OS, which is free NAS because it's an ISO which you get. So, you create a virtual machine, select the hardware type as free BSD 11.2, something like that, and then start with it. Let's, let's actually go through. Let's uh, go through some of these uh, setup things as well. Uh, we can add multiple disks for storage that you want to present as LAN and data store. So, that's something which we will add as well. And then we'll start in configuration and check on how to enable iSCSI service um, and set it to enable on reboot so that when you reboot the free NAS, it uh, um, enables the service automatically. Um, there's an, a shared tab which have block storage which is for iSCSI. That's uh, a very important tab for you to go through. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this session as well. And then all, all the host uh, to allow the access to all the host, what configuration we need to do. Uh, also, we'll go through how to provision the storage as well. Um, next, I'll go through preparing the ESX host. Um, obviously, adding the iSCSI target, uh, ne obviously network first, and then obviously adding the iSCSI software initiators. Resky the data store, and then we'll probably at the end, yeah, exciting bit, guys. I'll do a live demo on vMotion. So we haven't covered that at all so far and today is the 20th session. Uh, we are going to see some live demo on how to, um, how we be motion compute, which is the CPN memory. So stay tuned guys and we'll, we'll get uh, cracking now. Let's go back. Okay, so 
this is my freenas vm which is running here so i'll start by showing you obviously as you can see it's just a vm running but the guest os is showing as freebsd it has to be a 64-bit version that's a requirement as well um, and again you can select the compatibility as um, you know esx6 or later um, let's quickly edit and show you some things which i think are important for you to know obviously the first thing is freebsd 11 which i said the second thing is 8 gig memory two cpus this is important the third thing is um os partition 20 gig keep it separate give it a os partition and also give add it another add another disk i have given 200 gig here but internally i have only given 120 i think when we uh, format it within the freenas um but then you can also add another disk like I, I have added another disk here and don't worry if the if you add the disk later it's not like any other linux version where you need to reboot it to be able to av um, avail it you just add the disk go and check it in the disk section and you can see it straight away okay are you ready for it guys now let's get started so this is the download page on freenas if you go on freenas website um if you click on obviously um freena uh, freenas.org find this page um obviously we'll go download because we want to download and now they have changed the download page to a newsletter page don't panic at the bottom of the page you'll find um no thank you take me to the download page click on that and then you'll get the available downloads the current version is 11.2 u5 and the previous version was 11.1 u7 so i think i have downloaded 11.2 um as i was saying the minimum re requirement is 64 bit cpu and um, for memory requirement for ram or the memory is 8 gig so these are the things you need to remember obviously once you download it create the virtual machine as i showed you just now uh, with free bsd as a hardware um virtual hardware and then start installation if you have given 20 gig for os and 100 gig for data that's fine you'll switch through the setup anyway um, once you have completed the setup obviously you'll give it an ip address right once you get the uh, um, os rebooted on the first go you will be able to connect to it so i on my setup i have it running on 192.168.1.150 um, and when you first log in you get a dashboard like this so there you go guys this is your free nas um, so let's let's talk a little bit about it so you can see the bandwidth you know the health of the environment the cpu memory and everything else on the dashboard the bits you need to remember is if you go to system you need to configure the ntp server by default it does pull some servers um, as ntp servers um, and then if we go to general there's a lot of generic information you'll find here the one you need to remember is to set the time um time zone which is for us it's europe london um and that's about it from system now the next step we need to check is networks obviously we have already given it a network but if you go here you can set a domain which i have set to local and i haven't changed any settings at all because you really don't need anything to be done on interfaces you'll see one interface which is the one network interface which i have given 192.168.1.150 slash 24 network again i'm not doing any link aggregation so i have only given one network card so you will not find any details here um so this is the only network summary you can see here now the VLAN tab is not going to be touched again, neither the static routing tab. So for us to be able to uh, start provisioning free, um, for us to start working on provisioning iSCSI, this is what we need to do guys. Go to, first of all, once you are done um, installation, go to storage, in storage, go to pools, in pools you can go and click on add pool and that's what i have done here and i have added a pool and i have called it data store one and within this pool i can further create more learn so this is my 
main pool and I can create smaller lens from here and the lens which I have presented or the data store which I have presented today uh, to my storage is this one 60 gig one I can possibly show you another demo um, later on today maybe or in the next one on increasing this 60 gig LAN to 70 because um, I've done a ex um, how to expand a data store session but I couldn't actually do the expansion bit I showed you to a certain extent and it was I was unable to extend it from there because it was a local disk now because this is a proper full-fledged storage presented from FreeNAS I can increase it here and go back in the data store and then extend it there um, possibly we can I can do a, another demo on this at some point okay so this this is the LAN I'm using anyway um, so to get started with iSCSI what we need to go uh, do is first of all we need to go to services and enable iSCSI so when we are in services you'll see list of services enable iSCSI this is the flick button just flick it and then start automatically check the checkbox selected there's no other service that is required um, in my lab obviously I was testing with FreeNAS so I have it selected before I don't know what smart is that's already automatically selected so I wouldn't bother changing any settings which is already enabled but NFS I have stopped using it but I left it running anyway because I got iSCSI running now I'm using only iSCSI uh, but that's about it from the iSCSI side now what you need to do is go to sharing and this is the important tab where you will be doing all the iSCSI configuration which is in block which says iSCSI in bracket over here base name it populates on its own leave it leave it as it is don't touch that go to portals and over here make sure you change the listening to 0000 because that allows all the ESX hosts to talk to these um, FreeNAS if you have a specific number uh, uh, specific IP address there then it makes it hard for the ESX host to come in and uh, connect and discover so discovery so what we do is you click on these three dots here and then click edit or if you haven't got that click add and then you just select discovery authentication none IP address 000 port number is 3260 remember this port number guys this is very important this is the default port anyway you could potentially change it I wouldn't suggest you to do that though um, just leave it to that and then um, yeah and then click save add extra portal IPs it's there but don't do anything like that just add that and that's it and that's the important bit you need to remember so you need to set this to uh, uh, 0000 on the listener listener port and then change um, set the default uh, port number 3260 the next part is initiators in this one again this is the second important thing which allows all your ESX host to connect the initiators is set to all and authorization network set to all again to do that you click add and then once you click add you go to this section here just set all authorization network set it to all as well <clears throat> so once that is done obviously I have just given a comment for my own understanding to allow all ESX so to allow all host so that's, that's your reference only nearly done guys is another few tabs so authorization access don't touch this there's nothing I have changed here anyway targets we set a target so I have named the target a little bit unique to what I have got um, if you notice I have got my freeness running on IP ending 150 so I have given IQN iSCSI hyphen 150 so that I remember that this target is for my um, NAS which is uh, free NAS which is running on 150 so over here you, when you come up you will be asked to give a iSCSI uh, target name just give that name you can make up a name of your own if you want to um, portal group 1 allow all host so that's what I have done uh, if you click here it was none I have changed it to allow all host and change it to none authentication method none and that's it so after doing all that 
click OK and then that's it extends so obviously there are number of LUNs which we are there but I have selected this particular LUN which is um, 50 gig then we can edit that as well if you want to as you can see that's the name I have given it so although I have increased it in the background and make it made it 60 external name still key will be the same so let's cancel that and then the last tab is associated targets so <clears throat> this is the target name LAN ID 0 and then this is the extent which goes out um, you'll, you'll find it like this target is this LAN ID 0 and this is the name which I have given so that's about it on FreeNAS you're pretty much done if you have done this I found all the configuration which I've shown you I found if you have these configurations it will 100% work so make sure you have you have at least bare minimum gone to here you know and um, make sure this is created go to portals and set the listener to 0000 and add 3 if the, if the port 3260 is not there add it by default it should come up anyway and discovery method none that's what you need to do in initiators set it to all and all and then I'll obviously comment something access is not required target you need to mention a name here as well you just need to mention a name and that's it really um, the other important thing as I said was the services and make sure you enable the free NAS service that's about it on here <clears throat> I'm just going to have a uh, quick sip of water okay so let's quickly jump to our slide so we have completed all this enable iSCSI as you have seen and I have showed you the sharing um, the tab which has um, block iSCSI and then I have showed you the share tab which we have the storage there um, and we have seen how we have provisioned the storage as well so guys the video is already over 15 minutes now roughly um, I don't want to create uh, longer videos because uh, people then procrastinate to watch it as well um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the ESX pit and the live V motions uh, and also possibly